In this knit time lapse, I'll be showing how I took this Aritzia sweater and turned it into this cozy fall sweater. So first, let's do a quick overview. It has a raglan construction with a fitted turtleneck, tapered sleeves, and a hem that hits slightly below the hips. Aritzia sweaters are really good quality and I've had this for about 7 years now. But because it has been in my closet for so long, the fit is pretty dated. So in order for me to continue finding this wearable, I'll have to give it an updated makeover. I started planning what I wanted to knit by browsing on Pinterest and found these inspiration images. My goals for this project is to create a simple basic crew neck with a boxier feel. These are my top choices. I want looser cuffs that are a bit drapey and for the length, I definitely want to raise it to exactly hip length so it's more versatile to style. Finally, and maybe the most apparent to me, was going from a raglan to a drop shoulder construction. Drop shoulder sweaters always look a little more carefree and simple to me, whereas raglans have more of an intended fashioning about them. And based off the collection of images, I felt I was more drawn to a drop shoulder style. After a quick unravel overnight, I started winding the yarn into hanks the next morning. Unraveling and repurposing yarn from older pieces is one of my favorite ways to get new yarn. This Aritzia sweater is 100% fine merino wool, so it's great quality. It's actually been months since I purchased brand new yarn and I've been kind of refusing to because I have all these pieces that I know I can repurpose instead of donating them. So I'm starting with brown scrap yarn to secure my hanks. I cut a bunch of long pieces and lay it over my knee to get them ready. What I like to do is put a panel of the sweater securely under my foot as I begin unraveling it. This keeps it stable and allows me to use both my hands to unravel, plus I get more length from each draw that I pull. I know some people like to use the seaming yarn from the sweater, but I like a bit of contrast because it allows me to see more clearly where I'm tying each knot. And this way, I can space everything out more evenly. I ended up using brown and white scrap yarn to separate the cuff yarn from the body because sometimes these two yarns are slightly different. The ribbing yarn will have a slightly like shinier look to it. And this is a detail I found with some sweaters I've unraveled in the past. But for this particular one, all the yarn actually ended up being the same. I just took this extra measure in case it wasn't. The next step is to do what I like to call resetting the yarn. And this involves soaking it to remove all the kinks. I fill my tub with cold water and add a splash of fabric softener. The fabric softener I find makes a really big difference in relaxing the kinks and it just revives the yarn and gives it back its former plushness. I usually throw everything in all at once but for the sake of this video I just did it like this. So once everything's in the water I use my hands to press and squeeze and submerge the yarn. I let it soak overnight, I rang it out in the morning, and then air dried it by placing it on a rack. I also decided it would be more efficient to wind all the hanks into balls of yarn before beginning my knitting process. The next day I just created a quick swatch to get an idea of the tension, and I liked the fabric being produced so I'm going to stick with these needles. These are 3.55 millimeter needles, and I would say that the yarn is a DK weight yarn. The shoulders are super quick to knit because they are smaller pieces. They do have some shaping which gives them an obtuse triangle look, but there's not many to do, so it goes by quickly. Okay, so here I'm doing some spit splicing. I took the yarn from the sweater and I split it in half and then trimmed one half off. And then I took the ball of yarn and I did the same thing. I used my spit as the binder. You can just use water, it still works. Then I placed the ends in my palm and started rubbing until the pieces joined. 
By the way, if you're liking this video so far, please give it a like. By liking this video, you help boost my content and that helps me reach more people. Thank you. At this point, I got pretty far without making any errors, but it was measuring at a crazy length. It was about 9 inches and 3 quarters. I decided to just keep going because everything was just feeling so effortless and great when things go smoothly. I'm going for an oversized sweater anyway, so I thought that this would be fine. It's just such a good feeling after having to unravel so many times from my previous project. So I am a little nervous about the shape of the collar because it's not as rounded as I want it to be. For me, I notice when collars have a slightly off shape and I do consider them to be sort of the crux of a design, especially if a sweater is very simple and plain. The style of a sweater can change dramatically depending on the collar, so I may have to make some adjustments later, but for now, I'll be starting the cast on for the underarms. I'm also going to take a break from the voiceover and just let you enjoy the video. After all the late nights and the quiet drives The posters on your wall Keep everything secret You can trust that I won't forget it all Because I was your hero And you miss me You can use all that I said to you against me
I want to share a tip for doing a tubular bind off with a larger circumference. To start the tubular bind off, I'm going to do a knit one off and then purl one on. As you can see, there's the yarn that's attached to the needle and then right behind it is the yarn that's attached to the bind off. So that is the yarn that I'm going to lightly place my finger over to secure it. Then I pull the yarn through. By doing this, it helps keep the yarn from tangling because nothing is obstructing or clinging on to the yarn as it's sliding through the stitch. I'm gonna demonstrate this subtle technique one more time by using the back needle. So I'm starting with a purl off. And a knit on. So again, I'm differentiating between the yarn that is coming out of the needle and then the yarn that is attached to the bind off. I'm putting my thumb over it and then I pull the tail through. And that's it. Once you get into the swing of things, this doesn't take long at all. So now I want to demonstrate how the tail would pull through if I didn't hold the base of the yarn with my finger. Here I am pulling the yarn through right away and as you can see it gets tangled immediately. I think this definitely proves that it's worth it to take a moment and secure the yarn away from the stitch hole before pulling through. You'll spend less time doing the tubular bind off because you won't have to untangle the tail each time. I also want to share how I like to weave in my ends. So I think most people will put the needle through by pointing it away from the body and then point the needle back towards you and pull through. But what ends up happening is you have to go through the edge one more time to get the needle on the other side again so that you can weave the ends in on the inside part. To reduce the number of steps, what I like to do is point the needle towards me and go through the edge in this direction. Then I point the needle away from me and pull through. Now the yarn is facing the inside part of the sweater and all I have to do is weave it in. I hope this tip helps you cut the number of steps you have to take to weave the ends in. I didn't show the footage of me making alterations, but I'll go through what I did really quickly. For the collar, I picked up every single stitch and squeezed in a few more to reduce that puckering effect. This allowed me to use the smaller 2.25 millimeter needles that I initially wanted. I also adjusted the roundness of it by basically unraveling the whole front panel just to cast on more stitches in the middle. Thankfully, everything is done in stockinette, so it was faster to re-knit. For the armholes, I reduced the length from 9 inches and 3 quarters to a reasonable 7 inches. And then for the width of the body, because it was so huge, I reduced the shaping of the armholes drastically by just knitting straight down to avoid any shaping and adding increases. I only did some shaping about 2 inches before I reached my desired length, and that's it. Okay, so now for the hem. The hem cinches a little more than I planned and I did increase one row before ribbing by 36 stitches in order to compensate. However, I do believe that web locking will help solve this. I'm hoping I'll be able to stretch out the hem so that the body loses that balloony look because I'm definitely trying to stick as closely to my inspiration images as possible. By the way, if you found anything helpful or interesting so far in this video, please give it a like or let me know in the comments what you think. Also, I'm still using that same big ball of yarn and I'm knitting the sleeve now, so that means the sweater I was knitting before was huge. I'm also using 3.25 millimeter circulars for the sleeve when the body was 3.5 millimeters, but I wanted to take it easier and make it less tedious for me by skipping DPNs. There is a slight size difference, but I don't think it'll be enough to be noticeable. So do you know what I just realized right now? I forgot to do shaping for the sleeves. I can still just keep going in this direction. I think it'll still look perfectly fine, but... I really want this sweater to be elevated. 
If you've been watching my videos from the beginning, then you know that I can unravel multiple times for one project and it'll be no problem. But to be honest, sometimes I do feel tired and it's not like I purposely make mistakes so I can unravel everything. I do, however, deliberately show these mishaps because it is part of my process. At this point in my project, everything went pretty well. I made sure to record my progress as I knit the arm, that way I can make the other sleeve identical. The sweater was at a point where I could easily try it on and check progress too. Now the only thing that I have to be mindful and careful about is the width of the cuff. I'm just gonna skip ahead and let you know how the cuff turned out, which was not as planned. It was more of a regular looking cuff, maybe a little wider than usual, but I didn't mind. As long as it wasn't fitted and tapered like before, then I was glad to accept it. After completing the second sleeve, I went on to wet blocking my project. And I do it the same way every time. I use cold water, a splash of fabric softener, and then I submerge by pressing and squeezing. I let it soak overnight, squeeze out the water, then lay it flat to dry. I also pat it into place and take dimensions when wet. So I finally finished my sweater and it's just in time for fall. First and most obviously, it's got a balloony look going on around the hem. I'll be fixing this off camera. Secondly, the sleeves are more narrow but I'm glad I didn't go for that wide cuff look because it's just too much of a statement for me. I'm really pleased with the fit, drape and finishings and would love to hear what you think as well. Please leave me a comment if you liked or didn't like the outfit I put together. I just like to include them because I want to show how hand-knitted pieces can look stylish and modern.